This episode is brought to you by Cloudlink. When new software comes out, it has a version number, something like 8.2.0. If you're confused about what that means, you're not alone. The software industry needed a standard way to describe software releases, so we as consumers of the software or package could determine how big of a change it was and determine if we should upgrade. Semantic versioning, or SEMVR for short, creates that standard. In this episode, we'll discuss how SEMVR strings are composed, how you can read them to understand what's changing quickly, what entries in our composer.json mean, and how you can create your own SEMVR for publishing libraries. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published, and make sure you follow me at Scott Keck Warren on Twitter. Now let's get back to the problem SEMVR solves. One of the difficult challenges with software development is managing dependencies. It can be such a pain point, we've even named it dependency hell. In the days before Composer, we didn't know what version of different libraries might be installed on our server that our software was being installed on. If we had multiple applications running on the same server, we would run into conflicts all the time. We also might develop our code using one version of a package, only to have the server use a lower version without the features that we relied on. Thankfully, Composer stepped in and created a solution to determine if a package would work with our software and to localize it to just that application. Now, we always want to make sure we're using the most up-to-date version of the libraries our applications rely on. This makes sure we have the newest features and the latest patches for bugs. Composer uses SEMVR to determine exactly which version of each package we can use without us manually having to figure it out. Again, SEMVR is a method for defining a release of a piece of software. A SEMVR release string is broken into three numbers working left to right. The first is the major release, the second is the minor release, and the third is the patch level. Major versions are defined as a version where the package has made API changes that are incompatible with the previous major version. For example, the 8.0 release of PHP removed several functions that caused some applications to stop working, and it made the upgrade from 7.4 to 8.0 a little more challenging. Minor versions are defined as versions where the libraries have had functionality added, but in a backwards compatible manner. For example, the 8.1 release of PHP added a NUMS. This was done in a way that still allowed software developed on the 8.0 release to run on the 8.1 runtime without a problem. The patch level releases are just that. These are versions of the software that fix a bug or a set of bugs, but don't make any core changes to the logic. There can also be an additional label at the end of the SEMVR version to indicate if it's a pre-release or beta release. In those cases, we would use RC or beta respectively. For example, the PHP core language goes through several beta and pre-release versions before it's finally made into the final release. This is done so that bugs can be ironed out. Now when we compare SEMVR numbers, it's important that we work our way left to right and treat each number as a number and not a string. For example, 0.3.10 is ordered before 0.10.3 because the major number is the same, but the minor is greater than 3. And version 0.1.1 is ordered before 1 because the 1 is greater than 0 in the major version, and all the others become important. More about SEMVR after this word from our sponsors. We appreciate our sponsors because they make this episode possible. Now, we all love to write code. But managing the servers that that code runs on can be a time-consuming and error-prone process. Think how often you've seen reports of accidental AWS bills in the tens of thousands of dollars. Cloudways offers peace of mind and flexibility so you can focus on growing your business instead of dealing with server management. With Cloudways, you can optimize stack, manage servers, backups, staging environments, integrated Git, pre-configured Composer, 24-7 tech support, and a choice of five cloud providers. AWS, DigitalOcean, Linode, Google Cloud, and Vulture. For 20% off the first three months, use our code PHPARCH, that's P-H-P-A-R-C-H, or you can go there now at phparch.com slash cloudways. Thank you, Cloudways, for your support, and now back to our episode. Now, there are two ways that we can use SEMFR, as a consumer of the libraries that use it, or as a maintainer of one of those libraries. As PHP developers, we use SEMFR strings mostly through Composer, and Composer keeps a composer.json file that contains a listing of the libraries we need, and it uses SEMVR to manage those dependencies for us. 
Now, if we look into a composer.json file for a Laravel project, we'll see lots of libraries listed. For example, we'll see a Laravel framework, colon, caret 9.19. Caret 9.19 is telling Composer which versions it can safely use. The caret at the start will keep us locked into the 9 major release branch, so we don't accidentally upgrade to a new major release and break our application. We can also use the tilde character to lock us into the current minor release. Another option is the asterisk character for any version. This is helpful for command line tools not tightly coupled to our software like PHP Code Sniffer. PHP Code Sniffer doesn't directly interact with our code, so upgrading between major versions should be simple. We might also see ranges, or greater than, less than, or equal signs, but it's not as common. If you take only one thing away from this video, it should be this. We should all be using the caret inside of our composer.json. Then we must run composer update at least once a month to make sure we're at the most current version of all of our libraries, with a good degree of testing in it as well. Now, the amazing thing about composer and all of the modern package managers is that it allows our dependencies to have dependencies, which in turn might have more dependencies. It's really just dependencies all the way down. Each one uses Semver, but two libraries might support different major versions of the same library. Maybe both use the Faker library, and only one supports version 1, but the other supports versions 1 and 2. Composer will determine the best option for us. Hopefully, it's the newest version, but we could be locked into a previous major release until all the libraries are upgraded. Now, as a library maintainer, here are your rules to live by. 1. Breaking changes only in major versions. 2. New features in minor versions, as long as they don't have breaking backward compatibility issues. 3. Bug fixes and patch releases. I like PHP's approach where they deprecate the functionality in minor releases so they can remove it in major releases. Something for you to try out as well. Now, if you accidentally release a backward incompatible change as a minor version, it's not the end of the world. Just fix the problem and release a new minor version that restores that backwards compatibility. To recap, semantic versioning is a method to label releases. It's broken down into major, minor, and patch levels. Make sure that you're using the caret notation in your composer.json file and run the updates regularly. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Is there still something you find hard to understand about Semver? Let us know in the comments below or send me a message on Twitter at scottkeckwarren. We would love to hear how we can help you, and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading.